Hello and welcome to SaaS Junior Maths. Today, we are going to be looking at um, questions relating to WAEC and um, JAM on what we have done so far. So we are going to be looking at questions on WAEC and JAM relating to indices. So let's get started. Now the question, question one says, now we should simplify. 9 raised to the power minus 1 over 2 times 81 raised to the power 3 over 4 divided by 9 raised to the power 1 over 2. Now, as you can see, there is one thing I want us to understand when we are dealing with anything relating or regarding indices. The trick here is this. Try as much as possible to make sure you, you change the base to a common base. It's as simple as that. Try as much as possible to change the base to a common base. This is its base. This is its power, base and its power. This is its base and this is its power. So try as much as possible to have a unified base. Now, if I were to change this to a single base, I can, I can take all this one to 9. For example, this is 9. It's okay. This one, I can take this one to 9 raised to power something that will give me 81. And this 9 also, it's okay. Or I may decrease it to 3 because all they all have a common base of 3 too. If I should reduce them down to 3 as my common base. However, reducing it to 3 may make our work longer or may make the workload to be more. So why not decrease it to 9? Since this is 9, this is 9 then we can as well make this 81 to be 9 raised to power something in order for it to be 81. And in this case, it's going to be what? 9 raised to power 2. So that we can have a common base. And from there, we, we proceed. So let's move. So we have 9 raised to power minus 1 over 2 times 81 here becomes 9 raised to power 2 all into bracket 3 over 4. Let's not forget that 3 over 4 has been here before, divided by 9 raised to power 1 over 2. Now we have succeeded in making sure they have common bases. So the next thing we are going to do is to, um, we are going to um, simplify this. So it's going to be 9 raised to power minus 1 over 2 times 9 raised to power, you know, this is 2 times 3, 6 divided by 4. But I can as well say this is 2 here, 1, 2 and 4, 2. So I can as well decrease it to be 3 over 2. So because this is 1, now 1 times 3 is 3 divided by is 2 divided by 9 raised to power 1 over 2. So from here, since they all have um, a common base, we are now going to apply the law of what? Of indices here. And the law of indices, we are going to start from here. The law of indices here tells us that if we see something like this, a raised to power m times a raised to power n, then the answer is going to be a raised to power m plus n. So this is like saying a raised to power m times a raised to power n. So at the end of the day, our result is going to be in form of addition. So let's continue. So we have 9 raised to power minus 1 over 2 plus 3 over 2 divided by 9 or number, sorry, 9 raised to power 1 over 2. Now we have minus 1 over 2 plus 3 over 2. Now how do we sort this out? When you find or when you note that uh, notice that the denominator are the same. It's an equivalent fraction, sorry. When you notice that the denominators are the same, then what you just need to do is to take one of the denominators, which is two, that is a common one, then just add what you have up like this and divided by nine raised to power one over two. So minus one plus three is, is, uh, is two divided by two, over 9 raised to power 1 over 2. So 2 cancels 2 and it's 1. So we have 9 raised to power 1, which is, okay, 9 raised to power 1 divided by 9 raised to power 1 over 2. And 9 raised to power 1 is 9. So we have, okay, so let's look at it this way. Now we have 9 raised to power 1 divided by 9 raised to power 1 over 2 leads us to the second law of what? Of indices, which tells us that a raised to power m divided by a raised to power n equals a raised to power m minus n. So when you find two bases that are the same 
and their powers are different and there is a division sign here at the end of the day what you are going to do is you are going to subtract the powers together so so now let's do that so we have 9 raised to the power 1 minus half and when you, how do we have here 9 raised to the power 1 minus half and my answer is what half and i can uh, from here then I will find the root of it because 9 raised to the power 1 here means that this is the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 is 3. However, if you don't want to pass through this method, this process, you can as well say 9 raised to the power 1, you can decrease it to be 3 raised to the power 2 or 9 raised to the power 1, right, 9 raised to the power 1 over 2 can be also be reduced to 3 raised to the power 2 because I know 3 raised to the power 2 gives me 9 all into brackets 1 over 2 that is out here. So 2 cancels 2. And my answer is three. So whichever method you can use to arrive at this answer, it's okay. So, so that is the answer. So let's move on to the next question. The next question says, we should also simplify two raised to power minus three times 16 raised to power 3 over 4 times 2 raised to the power 0. Now, there are many ways at which you can solve this, but we look for the, the most easiest way. So, number 1, we can see 2. We can see 2, we can see 16. Fortunately for us, we can take this 16 to be 2 raised to the power something. You know, I said it initially that the secret behind all this is to make sure they have common base. So these two, these two, this is quite different. This is the only one that is different. So I will only make 16 to be about 2 raised to the power something so that it can match up with the rest of the uh, base that we have here. So I will say 2 raised to the power minus 3 times 2 raised to the power what will give us 16. And that is what? 2 raised to the power 4 all into bracket. There is 3 over 4 out here before times 2 raised to the power 0. So we have 2 raised to the power minus 3 times you know, 4 times 3 is 12, as I can as well divide direct. So I can say 4 cancel 4, and we have 2 raised to the power 3 times 2 raised to the power 0. So, whichever way, now you can see that the base are the same. I can just pick one, because I'll be following the law that states that a raised to the power n times a raised to the power n is a raised to the power n plus n. Isn't that um, law? I, will, I can as well say this is 2 raised to the power minus 3 because when you have 2, 2, 2, which happens to be the same base, you pick one of the base, which is one of the numbers here, and add the powers together. So we have minus 3 plus 3 plus 0. Minus 3 plus 3 plus 0. So Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. So we have 2 raised to the power 0, and it gives me 1. So 1 is my answer. And if you don't want to pass through this process, there are other ways at which you can do it. But time may not permit us for, for us to do that. And I can, another method here is I can as well say NT no, raised to the power 0 is 1. I can say this is times 1. And 2 raised to the power minus 3 can be 1 over 2 raised to the power 3. So on of which these two raised to the power 3 can still cancel that out. But that is another way at which one can solve it. So that is that for that. So let's move on to number 3. Number 3 here says, the value of x which satisfies the equation 9 raised to the power 2x over 9 raised to the power 3x equals 3 is, now, the same tactics, same system, Now, there is, this is 9, this is 9, which is a common base. But this is 3. Now this 3 has, lim has limited us to something. It has, what, has, what do I mean by that? It means that because of I'm seeing 3 here, I have no choice than to reduce this base to a common base that suits this 3, so that, this, so that the figures can be common together, so that the base, rather, can be what? Can be a common base. So from here I can say this is 3 raised to power 2 raised to power 2x over 
3 raised to power 2 also raised to power 3x. I know that 3 raised to power 2 gives me 9. That is 3 times 3, 9. So it has been reduced to 3 raised to power 2 into bracket 2x, which is here. 3 raised to power 2 also into bracket 3x, which is also out here, equals 3. Aha. So now we can, we can see that the numbers are beginning to, to look alike. So from here, I can say just multiply the powers together. I have 4x over, multiply these powers together, that is 6x equals to 3. So from here, I can use um, law of indices here, which states that a raised to power m divided by a raised to power n equals a raised to power m minus n. So we, from here, I can say this is 3 raised to power 4x minus 6x equals 3. So, and of, of which we all know that automatically some will mean 3 raised to power 1. So 4x minus 6x will give us minus 2x equals to 3 raised to power 1. And automatically we've seen that the base are the same. In this case, this is an example of exponential equation. So in this case, when you notice that the base are the same, you equate powers. Please, I've, I've done a video um, explaining the, um, this thing well on what we talk or, or what we mean by exponential equation. Please, you can always check my videos on, on indices. You will always see it there so that you can refresh or review it before um, coming to this. So we have, so from here, I will just equate powers. So I will have what? Minus 2x equals 1. Divide both sides by minus 2 so that x can stand alone. So my x equals minus 1 over 2, which is my answer. So let's move on to number 4. Number 4. Solve the equation 3x raised to the power minus 2 equals 4 over 27. Now, the question is asking us to solve the equation. So from the equation here, we have seen that without anyone telling us, it means that we have to find the value of x. Now, how do we find the value of x? The first thing we are going to do is to isolate x. Please, let's not forget that this is not saying 3 raised to the power x. No, this is 3x raised to the power minus 2. So the first step we are going to do here is what? Is to isolate x by making x stand alone. So what do we do? 3 is this number that is what? That is affecting or that is disturbing x at the moment. So what am I going to do? I am going to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. If the number here is 3, then I will multiply both sides by 1 over 3. Reciprocal is just like the inverse of a number. So if I, if I have 1 over 3 and I say multiply both sides by its reciprocal, the reciprocal of 1 over 3 is 3. If the question is, if you see 3 here as that figure, and you're asked to multiply both sides by its reciprocal, its reciprocal will definitely be going to be what? 1 over 3. So in order to isolate this x, I have to multiply both sides by 1 over 3. Multiply both sides by 1 over 3. So it's going to be 1 over 3 times 3x raised to the power minus 2 equals 4 over 27 times 1 over 3. So this cancels. I have x raised to the power minus 2 equals 4 times 1 is 4. 27 times 3 is 81. Now, let's not forget that the question is asking us to find the value of x, not the value of x raised to the power minus 2. So from here, I have seen a, a negative power here. When you have a negative power, brings us to another law of indices that tells us that what? x raised to the power minus a equals 1 over x raised to the power a. It means that when you see a negative power, this negative here will automatically stand for 1 over, please let that register at the back of your mind. Now when you see a base and a negative power, that negative power, to start with, you need to write 1 over so that that negative will vanish and return to positive. So you can see that this negative has, has been read, I've, I've written it as 1 over, so that when I rewrite this, I will have x and this a will become positive. So that's what I'm going to do here. So x raised to power minus one, x raised to power minus two will now be one over x raised to power two equals four over eighty one. So from here, cross I can cross multiply 
So when I cross multiply, I have, when I cross multiply, it means that this number here will multiply one I'm having at the denominator, and this one here will multiply the other one. So let's get started. So we have one times 81 equals four times x squared. Or I can as well say four times x squared equals one times 81. Why do I switch? I'm switching because the law of algebra makes us to understand that the letters should always be on our left hand side. So as in where we want to find the letter, anywhere you see a letter and you see ordinary number on the other side, try as much as possible to make sure that number and that letter or that letter itself remains on our left hand side. So we have four times x squared is four x squared equals 81. The question now says, find the value of x, but you know, there is a number disturbing it here, which is four. So what am I going to do? The numbers four and x, what is joining them together? Multiplication. To separate them, we have to use the opposite, which is division. So we divide both sides by four. Four cancels here, so we have x squared equals 81 over four. And to find the value of my x, x equals the square root of 81 over four, and x equals nine over two. That's, so that is the value of x. Or if this is a very long process, when you see a question like this, you can just automatically say x equals 81 over 4. When you want to, x squared equals 81 over 4. When you want to find, when you see a negative power here equals to a fraction and you want to change it to a positive, as soon as you change it to its positive, the what? The fraction will swap, will switch over. So and you will get your answer direct. So you can use this method in a very nice When you see this question in your objective, just don't stress yourself, just use this pattern. Or if it were to be in your theory, I would advise to elaborate and to what? To explain deeply and to in order for you to get your, your final um, result. So on this note, uh, we end today. So the next time we'll continue from here and we'll keep looking for questions related to the indices that appear in Y and Jam. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And please subscribe to my channel. God bless you.